the title is A Church Full of Humpty Dumpties. Amen. <laughs> and when I got the title, I was like, this is hilarious. Amen. <laughs> but when you think of the, the nursery rhyme, Humpty Dumpty mm -hmm. sat on a wall. Mm -hmm. Humpty Dumpty, look at my best friend, she's, she's smiling, had a great fall. All the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. Amen. And Apostle dared to take me to the king. Amen. Now all the king's horses and all the king's men couldn't put Humpty together again. But the king could put, can put you back together again. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So we have to take people to the king. Hallelujah. We have to give people Jesus. Amen. Not our own, not what we believe, not what we want, but give them Jesus. Amen. We know we come into the church to gain um, um, skill and to gain strength and to gain the tools that we need to go out into the world and to compel men, women, boys, and girls to come to who? The King. Hallelujah. To come to Jesus. Not to fill our churches. Not to come to our revivals. Not so they can hear how great we sing. Not so they can see how great we minister. How big our words can be when we're ministering the gospel of Jesus Christ. But no, so they can be put back together again because we serve a God that will remove the cracks. Hallelujah. We serve a God you won't look like You've been broken. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. You won't look like you've been wounded. You won't look like you've been scarred. If you take them to the king, God will seal up. Hallelujah. The cracks in the cracks, they'll be better than they were before. Yes. Amen. Amen. But we got a church full of Humpty Dumpties. Hallelujah. So many times we spend a lot of time preaching to the world. But first, we got to get us right. Hallelujah. We got to get the church right. The church right. Hallelujah. And then we'll be able to reach those who are out there. But if we cracked up and broken, how are we going to reach those who are cracked up and broken? The blind leave the blind. We will both fall into the ditch. Hallelujah. So the word that God has given me is for the church. Amen. 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 Because the church is full. Of Humpty Dumpties. Hallelujah. Yes. Go with me to Acts the 20th chapter. Amen. 20th chapter of Acts. Amen. And we know this is after Jesus' resurrection and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Take took root in the people, in the disciples, in the apostles, and those around them. Amen. They begin to, to, to put to practice. The power of the Holy Spirit, amen, that Jesus sent back. Hallelujah. Didn't you say that in your testimony he sent a comforter? Hallelujah. Not just to dwell around us, but to dwell inside of us. Hallelujah. And not to lay dormant, but for us to put you to the tool that he has given us. Hallelujah. But because the church is full of humpty dumpties, it's broken people trying to reach broken people. Hallelujah. And it's just causing more brokenness. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Acts the 20th chapter, 7th verse. And upon the first day of the week, when the disciples came together to break bread, Paul preached unto them, ready to depart on the morrow and continue his speech until midnight. Some of us, we can't spend two hours in church. Amen. By the time that it's 15 minutes that the pastor done been up there, hallelujah, we were ready for them to sit down. Amen. But Paul was ready to preach until midnight. And it's because he knew he was going to depart the next day. So he had to get it all out to them. Amen. A verse. And there were many lights in the upper chamber where they were gathered together. And there sat in a window, pay attention to these verses, amen. And there sat in a window a certain young man named Eutychus, being fallen into a deep sleep. And as Paul was long preaching, he sunk down with sleep and fell down from the third loft and was taken up dead. 
And Paul went down and fell on him and embracing him, said, Trouble not yourselves, for his life is in him. When he therefore was come up again and had broken bread and eaten and talked a long while, even till break of day, so he departed. And they brought the young man alive and were not a little confident. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. A church full of Humpty Dumpties. Hallelujah. So now we have them breaking bread. We have Paul preaching. And this certain young man decided to sit on the ledge. We don't know why he sat on the ledge. Maybe it was so many people in there. That's the only seat that he could find. Hallelujah. Or maybe it was so hot because it said there was a lot of lights. They didn't have electricity like we had. So they used can uh, candles, hallelujah. They used oil lamps. So maybe it was so hot that this certain man decided, well, I'm going to sit in the window so I can get a cool breeze. But while the preaching was going on, no one seen that maybe that wasn't a good idea. For this young man to sit in the window seal, hallelujah. See, what's going on? How can we relate this to the church? of today. Many times we're preaching, we're preaching, we're preaching. we all about ourselves and we don't realize there's someone sitting on a windowsill. There's someone in danger. There's someone who's about to fall, hallelujah, to their death. But because we're so caught up in what we want, our desires, our plans, that we miss the young ones, hallelujah. And I'm not just talking about the young in age. I'm talking about the young in spirit. Those who are still on the milk of the word. We're so caught up in what we're preaching. We're so caught up in what we're going through. We're so caught up in what we want. That is someone on the window seal. Yeah. Hallelujah. That's about to fall to their death. Because see, so many people, they play with sin. They play with sin. And because of the church, we, we, we preach on a few sins. But we don't preach on all the sins. We got to be careful. Yes, homosexuality is a sin, but so is gossiping, so is backbiting, so is lying, so is laziness. Hallelujah. So is being a coward. Hallelujah. If you a coward, it's a sin. Hallelujah. Cowards will not inherit the kingdom of God. Read Revelation. Hallelujah. It's the first sin actually mentioned. Hallelujah. But they're on the ledge. Hallelujah. Because we are who are the ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that has nothing to do with your title. Hallelujah. If you had accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you are ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And we have placed sin in a hierarchy. This is bad, but this is it ain't that bad. A little white. Lie. Hallelujah. When the Bible tells me that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Oh, but, but this right here, you know, she, she committed adultery, but it ain't that bad. But the Bible tells me if you look at a woman and lust, you already committed adultery in your heart. Hallelujah. There's no hierarchy when it comes to Jesus Christ. Sin is sin. It's sin. It's sin. Hallelujah. But there's many that's on the ledge. And we have overlooked them. Hallelujah. But the good thing about Jesus is even though he fell, hallelujah, Paul didn't keep on preaching. He didn't keep on preaching. He came down. Hallelujah. And then he did not only came down. What does it say? He fell on him. And then what he did, that was all he did. Then he embraced him. And while he was embracing him, he was comforting those who were in fear. Trouble not yourselves. Because as I'm embracing him, I'm bringing life, hallelujah, through the Holy Spirit back into him. Hallelujah. Because I see Jesus be resurrected. So I know that this is the resurrection that he will experience. Hallelujah. Humpty Dumpty settled them all. <laughs> Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. I don't care how great your fall is. Hallelujah. I don't care how great their fall is. They are never too far to be built back up. But when we try to use the king's horses and the king's men, then when we try to use ourselves, our power, hallelujah, our might, hallelujah, it won't come back together. Use the king. Hallelujah. He's the only 
one that can put us back together. He's the only one that can help you not even smell like smoke. He's the only one, hallelujah, when you won't look like what you've been through, hallelujah. He's the only one that can fill every broken place, hallelujah. I don't know what else to give you but Jesus. I don't have anything still and go have I not. Hallelujah. But what I do have is beyond, hallelujah, jewels. It's beyond money. It's beyond houses and land. Hallelujah. What I have will take you from life to life everlasting. And that's Jesus. Hallelujah. But be so high on the pedestal. Hallelujah. Don't come to the pulpit. Amen. This is holy ground. No, you are supposed to be holy ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But Paul didn't count in robbery to stop what he was doing and go down to grab, hallelujah, this certain young man. Hallelujah. Now let's transition. The certain young man, why did he even fall? Because he was asleep. Hallelujah. Many people are sitting in the church and it looks like they're getting it. It looks like they have life. It looks like you say, hallelujah. It looks like you're anointed. You have the biggest hat. You have the minister's collar. It looks like you got it all together. But you're still asleep. Hallelujah. You're still asleep. You're still on a ledge. You're still about to fall. Hallelujah. And that's from the pulpit to the door. Hallelujah. It's many pastors, many prophets, many apostles who have called themselves that are sleeping. Hallelujah. And they're on the ledge. Thank you, Jesus. And we just so busy. We just caught up. Hallelujah. And what's going on? We just caught up in our own selves. Hallelujah. When God said the strong ought to bear the infirmity of the weak. Hallelujah. Ought me this a debt that we owe God. We owe him to bear the infirmities of those who are weaker than we are. Hallelujah. Even if we have to go down from the third floor, bend down, fall on them, embrace them, and pick them back up. That's it. Hallelujah. That was a, a, a transport from the in, from his life into the death of that man. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm going to pick you back up. Hallelujah. Even you can't walk on your own, I will carry you. This is what we owe God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And then after that was done, Paul went right back to what he was doing. Hallelujah. Because now what he was preaching about, there was proof. Amen. See, I was wondering, like, how, how did he sneak that little bit in there? Hallelujah. There was proof. Because what they, they experienced the day they death died. Hallelujah. When Jesus rose, that was the day that death died. Oh grave. Hallelujah. Oh death. Where is thy sting? Oh grave. Where is thy victory? The day that death died was when Jesus resurrected himself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So they already had proof that it doesn't even matter. Because even if you go um, to a few chapters before that, hallelujah, Peter did it with Tabitha. Right. Amen. Yeah. We serve a resurrecting God. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't care how long you've been praying. I don't care how long you've been fasting. I don't care, mother, how long you don't see your children coming in. I don't care, brother, how long you don't see your siblings coming in. Hallelujah. Keep praying. Hallelujah. Keep fasting. Keep believing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even if they have to fall off the ledge. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Even if they have to be a little broken. Hallelujah. Take them to the king. Hallelujah. For he's a resurrecting God. Hallelujah. He's a resurrecting God. But we can't be so caught up in our plans and our desires. Hallelujah. We're in a time where the generation is sleeping and not in the world, in the church. Hallelujah. They come religiously. Hallelujah. They can speak in tongues. Hallelujah. Because they know how to imitate. Hallelujah. They can dance. They can shout because they know how to imitate. But they are asleep and they are on the ledge. Hallelujah. But the Holy Spirit that's in us is supposed to give us that discernment. Hallelujah. It will cause us to stop what we're 
they're going and go and rescue them. Hallelujah. Even before the fall. Amen. Amen. Some, some don't have to fall. If we just wake up, hallelujah, some will have to fall off that ledge if we choose to preach on all sin instead of one or two, hallelujah. Some will have to fall off that ledge if we stop thinking about what we're going through. Woe is me. Well, no, I, why I'm broke. Why I got to go through this, hallelujah. And we're missing someone that's right beside us that is planning on taking their life. We're missing someone that's right beside us that don't feel like they're loved. And I'm talking about you. Hallelujah. There's many more titles who have taken their own life. What is going on in the church? Hallelujah. That's the problem. Hallelujah. But God comes to make people whole. He's a God of completion. Hallelujah. He told us when he told Jeremiah to go to, to the potter. Amen. And God brought this to me because people will say I'm broke. I'm a single mother. You're broken. Hallelujah. You're not rich, so you're broken. Hallelujah. Your hair is too short, so you're broken. Hallelujah. You, you, you've been molested. You've been abused. You've been mistreated. You're broken. Hallelujah. You're damaged goods. Hallelujah. But God told Jeremiah, go to the potter. And when that vessel was in the potter's hand and he seen it as marred, he reshaped it. Hallelujah. God said, I won't leave you marred. I won't leave you broken. I won't leave you incomplete. I don't care where you come from. I don't care how you got here. You could have been the product of incest. You could have been the product of rape. I don't care. You could have came in poverty. Your daddy could have left you. Your mama could have left you. You could be a child of adoption, but you're still not broken. Hallelujah. You're still not damaged. Good. I don't care who rejected you. Hallelujah. I don't care what the doctor said. Hallelujah. You're not damaged. Good. Hallelujah. But we have we had a church. The church is full of Humpty Dumpties. Amen. Hallelujah. And because we're caught up in ourselves. Amen. We're caught up in ourselves. And they're falling. Amen. Bible says it's a great falling away. It's time for us to go get those who have fallen. But before that, we got to make sure we're whole. Amen. We got to make sure we're, we're delivered. We got to make sure we're actually set free. Amen. We got to make sure we, we are overcomers. Hallelujah. And we live a, a lifestyle of being not just a conqueror, but more than a conqueror. Amen. So we can go to the king. Hallelujah. And he will put us back together again. But it's time for us to wake up. Amen. Wake up. Can't you see the signs of the time? Amen. Let me tell you what, what, what's going on in the world. And how the way the government works is relative to the way the enemy works. Now, the way media works, media connects with the government, y'all ain't know. Amen? So, they, there's certain things they will show, and there's certain things they won't show. Amen? So, what, a lot of times what happens, all these things that are going on that we need to pay attention to, what the media and the government will do is focus on one thing, and it'll deflect us from everything else that's going on. Amen? We got to make sure we stay focused on it all. Hallelujah. Don't let the enemy cause you to deflect. The Bible says be sober-minded. Be vigilant. Amen. For your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he roams seeking whom he may devour. Amen. Why did they point out as a roaring lion. Because when you look at lions, they don't roar when they're going after their prey. But what God is telling us is the enemy is loud as day. But we're not seeing it. Hallelujah. He's making noise, but we're not seeing it because we're not sober. 
sober-minded. We're sleepy. We're not vigilant. What's vigilant is action. Amen? The enemy is making noise. But we're quiet. Hallelujah? Yes, God. The enemy is sober-minded. He knows exactly what he has planned. He knows exactly what he wants to do. Hallelujah? But because we are asleep, amen, when the seeds creep in, when you're sleeping, Hallelujah. And the enemy has crept right into the church. And he's not on the front pew. He's in the pulpit. Hallelujah. Speaking in an unknown tongue. Hallelujah. He's in the pulpit because he knows his word. Amen. But when the church doors close, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You wouldn't even know that that person is a Christian. When the church doors close, hallelujah. You want to know they're a pastor, a bishop, amen. I'm telling you what I've experienced. <laughs> amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. A church full of humpty dumpties. Hallelujah. But it's time for us to wake up. Amen. Wake up. Hallelujah. It's some things that we have to do. I love the elder. He, he's asking God, I just want to be more in your presence. Yes. Hallelujah. I just want to know your voice even yet the more. Know in the heat is intimacy. My sheep know my voice is intimacy. You are intimate with the voice of God. Yes. Hallelujah. That even when you hear the hustle and bustle, you know how to decipher which voice is his, is yours, is the enemy, is your friend, is your boyfriend, is your girlfriend, because you know we go to other people before we go to God first. Hallelujah. And this person, you got all these voices in your head, but when you're intimate with God, when you're intimate with his voice, he will silence the voices of everyone else. Hallelujah. And most of the time, his voice will tell you to do something in the uncomfortable. <laughs> Hallelujah. Uncomfortable. Really, God? Hallelujah. Really? Amen. Because God, he takes you out of your comfort zone. He can't deal with you when you're comfortable. Amen. Change is uncomfortable. But God said, I'm coming to do a new thing. Hallelujah. In you. Amen. So we have to know the voice of God. And the more you know his voice, the more you even see the way he sees. And you can be able to see that one who is on the ledge. And you can tell him, come on, get off the ledge. We're going to close the window. Hallelujah. Amen. It may be a process. You may still want to sit in the ledge. I'm going to close the window. I mean, I'm still going to tell you in love about your sin. Hallelujah. I'm still going to tell you in love that you're not right. We can't say we love people, but we don't tell them the truth. Woo! You don't love me if you're sitting and you're watching my soul be lost. How dare you say you love me? Hallelujah. Yes, God is love. Yes, Jesus is love. Hallelujah. But every time he loved on someone, he told them, go and sin no more. Hallelujah. He loved everyone. But that's how he ended it. Go and sin no more. Hallelujah. Because I saved you from this. <laughs> the woman who was taught in the act of adultery, I saved you from this. Amen. Don't get found there again. Hallelujah, because the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Amen. And the only gift, a gift is free. A wage is what we earned. We earned death. Amen. All of us, we earned this. Hallelujah. We worked hard for it. Amen. Hallelujah. I, well, I can't talk about y'all. I can talk about me. I earned death. Every day that I'm paying, that I'm getting now, I earned it. Amen? But God gave me a free gift that I accepted. Hallelujah. Which is eternal life. So even though the wages I'm still getting, amen, he's cushioning it. Hallelujah. Because what apostle said, God before you, he's more than the whole world against you. Hallelujah. So he's cushioning it. Meaning it will be even worse. If 
if I didn't accept the gift of life. Hallelujah. Life everlasting. Life eternally. That doesn't start when I take my last breath. It starts right now. Amen. Right now, the people in the church have the most nastiest attitudes. But supposed to have life. Everlasting. Amen. But they look at you weird. Hallelujah. Got clicks. Amen. We got to get it together. Hallelujah. It's time to get it together. So that when the outpouring comes, because in the last days I'm going to pour my spirit upon all flesh. Sons and daughters will prophesy. Some of those sons and daughters will have tattoos all over their face. Some of those sons and daughters will have piercings all over their face. Some of those sons and daughters will have purple, green, yellow hair. Some of those sons and daughters will have tattoos all up and down their arms. Hallelujah. Some of those sons and daughters will have mohawks. Amen. He said all flesh. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We got to get it together so that God can do what he wants to do. Amen. Hallelujah. I don't want him to do nothing without me. I want to be included. Hallelujah. And what he's going to do. Amen. In the season that he's going to do it. Please include me. Hallelujah. But don't forget about the Humpty Dumpties that are in the church. Amen. We can stop them from falling. But even when they fall, we can take them to the king. Hallelujah. Pick up the pieces. Some of the pieces we want to leave down there because some of those pieces are depression. Some of those pieces are oppression. Some of those pieces are abuse that they've gone through. Heartache. So we want to leave those there. Amen. Let's take the pieces back to God so he can, he can restore, renew, refresh, strengthen. Amen. And make them complete and whole. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The woman who had the issue of blood. Hallelujah. Had. And isn't that crazy? We don't know her name, but we know her by her issue. What? Isn't that crazy? Hallelujah. They may not know your name. The, the woman who's a single mother. Hallelujah. The woman who was a prostitute. The woman who was an alcoholic. Yeah, that girl who was a crackhead. Hallelujah. God, I don't know you anymore by your issue because I delivered you. Hallelujah. Now you're the woman who's a daughter. You're the man who's a son. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You're a man, you're a woman who's a minute, the minister of my gospel. Hallelujah. Woo! But we know her by her issue that she went through with 12 long years. As long as Jesus was there, nobody took her to him. Hallelujah. She had to press away. Hallelujah. She pressed away. Hallelujah. She decided to go against the law to get this healed. And God is looking for desperate people. Hallelujah. Even in her weakness, I will crawl to Jesus if I have to. Because I know in my weakness, he is strong. Hallelujah. Even though people will see me as unclean, but in my uncleanliness, he is clean. He is alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even if I have to roll to him, just take me to Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. He is the only one that can bring deliverance. He's the only one. Hallelujah. That can cure your every issue. Hallelujah. Every issue. Hallelujah. The only one that can deliver. It don't matter how hard it is. Nothing. It's too hard for God. Nothing. Nothing. Hallelujah. God shall supply all of your needs. Hallelujah. Don't confuse your needs with your wants. You don't have to supply your wants. I'm sorry. I supply all your needs. Amen. Hallelujah. So we have to make sure, amen, that we stay attentive spiritually. Amen. Feed yourself the word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Some of us, we got we to gotta turn the TV off. Amen. Gluttony is a sin. And every time people say gluttony, they think of food. That's not the only type of gluttony. <laughs> Amen. It could be TV. It could be movies. It could be music. Whatever is taking your time away from God. Amen. It's gluttony. Hallelujah. 
It's time for us to get in the word, get in his presence. So that when we come across those, they may be in the grocery store. And that person can be on the ledge. Amen. See, the enemy, has, he's not only causing people to come against others, he's turning people on themselves. And they're, they're, they're doing it at his age, at her age, at his age, at his age. Our kids are killing themselves because the enemy is after them because they have a calling and God is ready to use them. Not the church of tomorrow, they're the church of right now. So the enemy is causing them to hate themselves, to say that they don't have a purpose of being here. And it's up to us who are their covering to pray and fast. For them, they are worth turning down a plate. They are worth turning off the TV. They are worth the prayer and the fasting. Stop praying so much for yourself that you forget about those who are weaker. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, yes. Tell the truth. Yes, it's things we want. Yes, it's things we need. Hallelujah. But God already knows what you need. Pray for those who can't do it. For themselves. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you to God gave me a, a, a burden for the young people. And not just these kids, but yes, them too. But those who are babes in Christ. Hallelujah. The enemy is in our schools. Hallelujah. He, he's been some of the teachers that has chosen to teach your kids about sexual orientation. When they don't even know how to read and write and do math on their grade level. Hallelujah. They're dealing with bullying. Stop telling these young people. It said a young, certain man. Yes. He was young. And sometimes we we'll look at the young people and say, why are you tired? Hallelujah. He fell asleep. Why are you tired? You should have all the energy. You don't go through nothing. All you got to do is go to school. All you got to do is do your homework. You don't know what they dealing with. In the schools, how many demons they're fighting? We wrestle not against flesh and blood. Do you think that's just, that's just for us adults? No, they're wrestling against principalities. Hallelujah. Spiritual wickedness in high places. And unless we give them the tools they need, they will fall at the hand of themselves and of the enemy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. So though the grandparents, the uncles, the aunts, hallelujah, even though they didn't come from your womb, the Bible says train up a child. It didn't say your child. Train up a child in the way that they should go. And when they're old, they won't depart. Pour a seed into them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That's the word that God gave me. Amen. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word. He's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah.